quiet on set. Okay. Okay. Tarot Documentary presents Filming in Thailand, a podcast for movie lovers with exclusive stories from behind the scenes. Rolling sound. Sound rolling. And action. Hi, I'm your host Stéphane Lambert, and this is a new episode of Filming in Thailand. And here we are. Today's episode of Filming in Thailand is glad to welcome uh, Lee Tongkam. Yes, Lee Tongkam. Lee Tongkam. Sawadikap. <laughs> Sawadikap. Lee, you're a director, uh, you're a filmmaker, and you have this very special skill of being American Thai, making Thai movies that are selling all over the world, um, or are you making American films that are working in Thailand? How, how should I put it? Right now, I'm doing all the above. <laughs> what, what do you mean you're doing all of the above? Yeah, are, are you a Thai filmmaker making Thai films, or an American filmmaker is making American films? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Well, before, yes, I was just a director, you know. Okay. I just a Thai director doing a Thai movie. Now that I have my own business and my company, now that I produce an American movie shot in Thailand also now. Okay. So, so I also direct American movie, like, you know, independent film shooting in Thailand. So I'm, uh, still, I'm supporting Thai community <laughs> shooting here in Thailand. Um, so that's very interesting. So you, you are a Thai director? Yes. Are you living in Thailand? Right now, yes, I, I did. So my first question should be... Kunli, are you filming in Thailand? Yes, I am filming in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> your your past films, your past your latest films uh, are all taking place in Thailand. Yes, um, they've all been successes uh, in Thailand and around. Yes, um, and they are. Um, I think all of them are available on global streamers. Yes, Netflix and Amazon. Yes. What's your secret? <laughs> no. Please tell us your secret, <laughs> all your secrets. <laughs> no, it's it's quite it's not that often that uh, um, the the Thai film industry is 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 being represented all over the world. Uh, yes, that's ma mainly my goal right now. Is um what, like I said um first I want to be just director. Um, once I produced and directed my first feature film, The Maid, which got uh, first Thai film to be original Netflix. And it was a success on Netflix. Success. That was yeah. quite amazing. It just got that title to become the first Thai, you know, Thai film to be on original Netflix. Well, well, the maid had a, a, a Thai name, Thai title. Or yes, uh, Salap Chai. Salap Chai. Yes. So, which means the, the maid. maid. <laughs> the maid. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's yeah. different between Salap Chai and Meban? Meban. Well, Salap Chai is like a like a secret meaning to it. It's, it's, it's like a secret also, like a maid have a secret mm. hidden, hidden inside the house, that kind of way. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, it fits with the film. Yeah. So after that, and the movie just blasts off everywhere, and people just loving it and hating it, loving it, hating it. It's like, wow, at least it's getting something. Oh, and, yes. and, and I saw the attraction is getting like um, India is, is playing in India it became number one in India it became this and this everywhere and I get a lot of email from India it's like hey, and Malaysia in Singapore everywhere it's like hey they made this they made that you want to do this you want to do that so got me thinking like is that is drawing in international audience to Thailand I'm like we That's should, true, we yes. should get more of that you know bringing people into Thailand draw them in our content because when you wrote you you wrote the the yeah. film when you wrote the script you you I guess your your idea was not to make an international film you were making a film yes I just want no I was still young five years ago I was just like you know trying to just make a movie and five years later you're still young huh? <laughs> <laughs> in in the industry wise I'm still young I'm yes. still young I'm still new no no you have you have successes it's in like, films you know I just want to make a movie it's a simple okay. horror movie that's it I didn't expect to be this global. And when you look back at the success of the maid, do you understand why it was a success? Yes, uh, it is different. People keep telling me that it's different. In yeah. in what sense? Different because <clears throat> of uh, mixing sex and horror no, and suspense and action. Everything from a cinematography standpoint, from how it looks, the feel, the mood, it looks international. 
the, the my movie made it look international audience target because I was, you know, raised in, in America all my life. So we'll, we'll go to your life a oh, bit yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But yeah, like like I say, it just feel that it draw the international audience into this movie more, into my content more. You were you didn't have in mind Netflix when you wrote it. No. Or did you? No, you didn't no. have. So when you you had because the the maid is the story of this uh, young maid uh, uh, starting to work in this um, let's say rich wealthy family, yes. and then there is sex involved, yeah, and there is sc horror, sc scandal, scandal, horror, horror. thriller, slash everything. <laughs> so you you took the typical Thai lacor, the Thai soap yeah, yes, series, yes. and you <laughs> exploded it to into something big. Yes. W what was your uh, inspiration for this film? Um, Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, yes. A, a film in particular, or just his career? His, his just style. Just the way, just the way he think that. Hey, we don't have to just stick in one genre. Okay. You know, we can just bend the genre. Like, why is that? Why the may have to be just a horror, simple horror movie? Just make it something else, something more. So difficult for for filmmakers to make it to the the world stage, and suddenly it, it it's it's offered to you. I how have, did you reacted? What yeah, you? well, I have to thank and not thank COVID also. <laughs> how come? Yeah, because um, the maid got finished during COVID, oh. um, um, right when it hits strong and people were sat home, and just that exact same time, Netflix looking for that one movie, okay, the original movie to release, and I just happened to finish the movie exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like perfect timing. Is it Netflix calling you saying that you cannot talk too much? Talk about, about that. Talk about the, the, the Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we will sue you. <laughs> you cannot share your code. <laughs> Netflix is is sharing actual data with you when you when you have a film making yes. a success. Yes, they show the report of how many views in each country. How precise have. is that? Like, do you know, like the percentage of men, women, their, the age, uh, where they're watching from, how they're watching it, if they're watching until the end? Uh, do you have that kind of, uh, yeah, they have of like analytics? Yeah, have like a demographic of you know, <clears throat> who's watching it, who's, who the cat is on. They really, uh, really scary, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So what was the, could you draw a profile of who was the, 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 the uh, you know, the audience of, uh, of the maid? The female. The female? Yeah. Female, there's, you know, there's... Uh, Lesbian involved in the movie as, sure. as well, so Absolutely. people was like just drawing in more of that. Mainly female because you know it's uh, it's a love story. They think they turn into a horror and then to do a thriller. It just you know. So how how did you move out from this success and 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 start working on the next one? Well, um, the quick question is that I came to Thailand to work on my biggest film, the the lake. The monster movie. How did you start thinking about the lake? Was it something you brought with you to Thailand, yes, or something? I was in the states. Uh, you know, I got inspired by my, my best all-time director is Spielberg, of course. Okay. And you know, Jurassic Park is my childhood movie. Okay. First one is how I you know want to come to filmmaker because so Sp Spielberg, Spielberg, Steven Spielberg, and the Jurassic Park yes, was yes. somewhere in your head, and then you came up with the idea. Yeah, the I want to do this in Thailand. Okay, somehow, you know. So I just learned everything, Be watching behind the scene videos, <laughs> online Googles, and how you do, how you make animatronic movies. So I brought to Thailand, and I just knocked to every door <laughs> in the industry. I got, I'm, I got no connection to where I come here. Yet. Okay, I, I just really <clears throat> nothing. I got, I just packed my bag. I just pack my bag and just give up my life in the States and just come here. Let's see where it goes. So let's pause on the lake. We'll come back to the lake and let's talk about how you started. So, because this is quite fascinating. So you arrived in Thailand. You're Thai. Yes, I'm Thai. But you came to Thailand with no connection. No. Um, where did you come from? When you arrive, I mean, uh, I'm not oh, yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. all the family secrets, <laughs> but well, so you arrive, uh, where were you coming from when you arrived to Thailand? From yeah. the US? Yeah, I was I was in uh, Florida. In Florida. I you was, were born there? Born and no, I, I was born in uh, uh, Nong Khai of Thailand. Okay. Uh, until, which, until, is, which is like um, East San area. East San area. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Close to Cambodia, Laos. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I was born here for uh, until I was six. Then I went to live with my mom, you know, uh, in the States. Okay. So, uh, in Florida. 
Yeah. Well, we travel a lot. Travel you know? a lot. But yeah, in in America. In America. Yeah. In America. And then you no, know, just raised there. My mindset is there. Mm, okay. Um, the pop culture, everything I learned, everything from the you know, American audience, Hollywood movie. You know, everybody want to go to Hollywood. You know? Sure. That's my goal. And then I go to you know Full Sail University, which is in Florida. Go to uh, college, film school. What everybody want to do? Want to be a filmmaker? Because there's no, back then there's no you know. YouTube, <laughs> there's no yes. nothing they can learn from, you know. So we gotta go to college, film school. So yeah, stay there, and then after that, just try and make my way in Hollywood. But you know, ten years later, it's like, hmm, wow. Well, well, of course, between that, I work on Hollywood film, like you know, like a PA and production manager on like Fast and Furious, Spider Man, all that stuff. Okay, so but, but that, but, small. but my goal is only like want to be a director. No, I, how did you find yourself working in, uh, on such on so so? I mean, titles that were so big. You, you mentioned well, very big films. Well, they they were shooting in my backyard. I mean, no, <laughs> like my <laughs> what a big backyard. <laughs> yes. No, that, they were shooting in Atlanta. Okay, that's why they no. Oh, they, they were looking for a team for yeah, team members, yeah. and you but, applied. But the production team, everything, and my schools support me to go over there and you Fantastic. know to be PA to be to work on the sets and stuff. You know, to learn the big the big league. And but still, you know, you're only there for like a you know, small position. Well, yeah, but you're still there. I mean, yeah, good money. <laughs> good money, I guess. Yes. You know, does does Hollywood paycheck is good? <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, but mainly. So you were there. You you start to get a feel of of real movie making, yeah. big budget. Yes, and of course, everybody dream one be that in the director's chair. Sure. Of course. Now, just me as an a Thai guy, just like no connection whatsoever. It's just like. Yes, it's a, it's a struggle trying to get there. Because your family was not in the movie business. No, you, nothing. You, you nothing. Have, like I said. Connections to just enter and yeah, start. Well, like back then, I said, there's no YouTube. Oh, and there was no YouTube, yes. <laughs> How to become a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. no video to watch. <laughs> just books and uh, <laughs> words of mouth. <laughs> but, but yeah, I've been doing that for 10 years, just you know, working on sets and stuff. So you're there, and uh, so, you decide, so you decide to come back to Thailand. Yes. So you pack your bag. Yeah. Did like, you make any phone calls before saying, "Hey, uh, do you have a job for me?" Or no, I, well, I send emails, you know, to every studio, some production here, and everything. any answers? Any any people say yes? You're welcome. I, come here. No, I I, <laughs> I just no nothing. No no answer. I just come and just email, send send send, knock on everybody's door. No 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 no. Who are you? Um, <laughs> I, I, I got the leg. We want to do it. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, who are you? I got nine nine no until that one guy. They say. Yeah, sure. Why not? Just come, come meet me. Who is this guy? That's P Boy, <laughs> <laughs> the famous yeah. boy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. He, just that one email that makes a difference. Let's say, hey, yeah, I just just that he don't write long email. Mm. No, write, he's not really yeah, talkative. Yeah. Huh? I wrote him like a long essay, like <laughs> why I should do. I do. We should meet. He's like he just say yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Come here at you know this time. I go oh shit, okay, <laughs> okay. I take a chance. I just go hey, sure, just. Get a hotel next to the location. I just come and meet him, and then after that is history. And I pitch him the lake. Yes, and then he's like, "Okay, let's do it." So yeah, I want to make a monster movie. He want to make something different, which he didn't realize. Oh, monster movie. That's monster that's movie. new. But doing it animatronic wise, doing it you know not CG heavy. He's like, "This could be big." He sees something like I where I see something. Like I said, as director, everybody should know that you gotta find one producer who believe in your vision. And the, you guys can just kick off. You can't do this industry by yourself. That's why I failed at 10 years in in Hollywood, because I was doing it alone. I have okay. no, I have nobody to push me to help me to support me in the industry. But now you have a producer who can help you and guide you through the industry. That's how you can make it. You are listening to Filming in Thailand, a podcast by Tarot Documentary, with your host Stefan Lombert. And we are back for the second part of filming in Thailand with Lee Tongkam uh, coming straight from the US, almost. There, there was a big stop from, uh, from the US to Bangkok. How, how long have you been in, in, in Thailand for now? Uh, I think five years. Five years. Yes. Making films in Thai language is important or you could make a film in English or whatever language? For me, it's important. Uh, making a Thai movie is important because we are the only country in Southeast Asia that can expand outside the world. Malaysian movie net can do it. Not only a movie can do it, but us because we have track record like Ombak, Bad Genius, and we have GDH okay. company that can expand all for us. 
not many Southeast, Southeast Asia companies have that. So. Actually, in Asia, you have the, you had the Japanese uh, movies that were super successful. Yeah, I'm not saying Southeast Asia. <laughs> ah, Southeast Asia. <laughs> But if you, if you make it Asia, Asia, yeah. be, Asia wise, uh, what are the the filmmakers that are that you want to follow the, the the path or that are your inspiration, if if any? Any filmmakers that do something different and dare to expand to support their their country, you know, outside to draw in the international audience. <laughs> Were you watching Thai movies earlier in your career? Yeah, I studied every aspect of Thai movies. You know, when I decided I want to move to Thailand, I'm watching every movie, study every actors who playing this, who's big in this market. You know, so I just been busy, you know, watching movies. <laughs> What is it special about a Thai film? Is there something that must be some ingredients for a Thai film to be a Thai film? It's the same way you ask everybody, you know, like well, who the, you ask all the foreigners, like why come back to Thailand? It's fun. <laughs> it's it's good place to visit, travel, everything. We have the culture of international. Mm -hmm. We welcome everybody into Thailand. You know, um, people love the food, the be the beaches, the everything, the street, the air. You know, so in Thai movie, when people watch it, they go, oh yeah, yeah, they, they feel like at home. You know. <laughs> But is there is there a specific storytelling style of uh, in Thai films? Yes, yes, we do. We have some censorship that we can't, you know, show or oh, do, you know, and especially about you know other things. My latest movie, you know, that one that I released, Kill the Killer. I I hint some things in it that <laughs> some some young generation will appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this film. So, um, Kill the Killer is uh, how would you? Is it is it also a horror film? No, nope, it's an action comedy. It's an action comedy. Kill Bill style Japanese uh, mixed martial art, you know, action. Yeah. Mm. By the way, it's going to release on Amazon Prime tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, uh, The Maid is available on Netflix. Yes. Um, Kitty the Killer is available on Amazon Prime. Prime. The Lake is on Amazon Prime. The Lake is on Amazon Prime. Yes. Wow. Uh, so you're part of this um, club of very few Thai filmmakers available online all over the world. Yes. Um, and also is also available in the, in the States also on Amazon Prime in the States as well. Does it change your perspective on, the, on filmmaking to be, to be successful? Uh, um, no. No. I still, yeah. I still want to be a director and okay. tell stories and anything else. Does it bring you more more resources, more means to achieve and tell the story you want to, to tell? Yeah, now I'm just more excited about, you know, about the business side of the film industry, which I didn't know back then, you know. Now that I know about the business and the industry, like, okay, now I can help grow it, you know. <laughs> Some people find it difficult to, to, to be at the same time on the business front and on the creative front. Yes. Are you dealing with both sides? Yes, I do, actually. <laughs> does one side affect the other one? It does. The business yes. affect the creativity or yes. the other way around? Both. 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 Both, yes. It's like yin and yang, you know. The, the, the famous twin brother and sisters. <laughs> yes. Who's in the sick? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ying and Yang. So, so what would be the, the good side and what would be the bad side? Yeah, it's, it's just a slot. Some, uh, sometimes the business is good, sometimes the, 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 they're creative with the filmmaking, you know. We just, we just have to be, you know, in line. It's just who your partner is, who's, who you work with, have to um, link to each, each other, you know. Um, once I know the business, it's like, oh, man, I just don't want to be, I don't want to be a filmmaker no more because... I want to control the filmmaker and make this, uh -huh. but when I'm when I'm filmmaking, like stop controlling my creative side. But there's a reason for that. You know, when people don't know, it's like, oh my god, I, I can't choose both. I have a quote for you. Okay. Uh, Martin Scorsese once said that a director must be a policeman, a midwife, a psychoanalyst, a psychopath, and a bastard. What are you? <laughs> are you a policeman? Are you a A midwife uh, on set. What are you? Oh, on set, huh? Uh, pretty much a policeman, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that that control helps a lot, uh, especially when you. Um, it's all depends whose company is it, whose money you're using. You know, if if you're just a director as a hiring job, you're a midwife. 
But mm. if, if you if you if your money spending your own money to produce this movie, then you're the policeman. You have control. <laughs> Everything to make sure that everything is in place. So as a producer, you would be the policeman, yeah. and as a director, you would be the the midwife. Yes. How do you deal with the with actors and actresses on set? Man, like like nobody just. Are you are you the, the, this kind of director that are extremely precise, and you have the script, you have to skip to to stick to the script, or you are giving them freedom and. Tell them what you want and oh, okay, no, I love that. I love improvise, improvision. I love to talk to about my actors. It's like don't follow my script. I wrote it in English and translate in Thai. <laughs> you know, my my dialogue's not that good. So just like just freely, just say what you want to say, but keep the same meaning of it, you know. Anthony Hopkins said that the trust between an actor and a director is the the base of a successful relationship. Yes. Do you have trust and do you believe that, or, or do you need the actor and actresses to trust you? It does. Back to the lake, my first feature film in Thailand, you know, I don't know nobody. Like I don't have connection to all the big cast. Uh, when we meet with the big cast, my producer helped me to talk to them and believe in you. You got like, you know, hey, you want to make the lake? Like they go, um, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, why would a big A-list want to work with an unknown director? But you got to sell. You got to sell your vision to them and go, you know what? Even though he's a new act, he's a new director, I believe in his vision. And if the actors believe in you, he can take you to all the other actors or, or the industry and go, hey, believe this guy. He has something going. So the trust between the actor and director is really important. The Lake was quite a large production. Big cast, large production, Yes. Did you doubt? Did you find yourself in like, you know, doubt? You wake up in the morning and say, oh, wow, I'm completely wrong. What am I doing today? What am I doing here? Is this going to be a failure? Well, well, just every day in my life? <laughs> I mean, you don't have, come on, come you don't have doubt. You, you go, you're not, you know, doing it right. What, what, what's, do you have like a motto or a phrase you say or something you think about to bring back some energy when you need? Yeah. Um, you only, when's the, when's the last time you make a movie? You only do it one time in your life. This is the only chance you have. You know, you've been struggling for 10 years, trying to make trying to make one movie. Now you have a chance to do it. You have about, what, 20 days shoot. 20 days within five years of your life. You got nothing. So you spend that 20 days, me like, like whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, do, do it, you know, yeah. Do you have uh, some some films that you would recommend people to watch in order for them to understand Thailand? Oh, understand Thailand? Mm. Yeah, On Bak. I mean, On Bak. Yeah. Okay, that's the only that's the only movie that I can tell them to watch. Is On Bak. You know, that's that's the movie and the movie. Yeah. And why why is that why, why is that that you consider On Bak to be the movie because you have like. Some some other films you could have chosen. Why this one in particular? It's international receive. Okay, um, it's mixed culture. It shows everything. The they have Mount Buddha food, um, languages, jokes, everything. It's just just everything <laughs> underground stuff. Bangkok okay. they have everything in the movie, and it's tell. I uh, know it tell the respect of what we do, the culture, everything. Not not many movie can show the the respect of how we how Thai people really respect Buddha. You know, mm -hmm. so this is the movie that I could portray some other movie maybe, I'm, but this is the movie that I remember. You know, the, and, 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 and and I show this movie to all my friends, all the my, the filmmakers in the states. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. You know, do you think some of your friends, uh, American filmmakers, could come to that are not Thai, could come to Thailand and make a Thai film, not make a film, an American film, mm -hmm. and use the production services here, but come here and make a Thai film? No. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm saying, no, you can't. It's very interesting. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, why is that? Even I fail. You know? Okay. I mean, oh, no. Why would you say you failed your year? Well, you, you're not like, fail in a way that you try, and, you try to get the target audience of the Thai audience. Hard. Okay. Even I can't achieve that fully yet. You know, it, it would take me time because I don't live here or, or I, I don't raise here. You know, I don't know much about a when five years ago, you know. I just do the lake, you know. Uh, I don't know much about the culture. I don't study much about living here and know about the, you know, all the legend, all sure. the other languages. Um, so, technically, I'm a foreigner. 
you know, come trying to make a Thai movie. But maybe that's why you are successful because you can bridge Thai storytelling and, and American storytelling that's, within the one that's, movie. That's the future goal. Is you know that's why I took like and every movie that I do is successful. I have the my mom's Thai, so I have the mindset of a Thai um, theme style but my mood and tone is international because that's i don't force myself to be like international you know feel and all my shots and stuff it's just happened to me because I, i learned study from america you know would it be possible and maybe this is what you you are actually doing would it be possible to have um thai production um pushing forward foreign directors foreign stories shot in thailand from a thai perspective Yes, yes. Um, I don't think it exists yet, or does it? Not yet, but it takes time, and you just need time to learn it. You know, come here and learn our ways first. You know, stay in Sukhumvit for like a month, <laughs> and then you will know our culture. <laughs> but because the film, and this is one of the, the object, the, the topic of the Filming in Thailand podcast is, Uh, there are so many foreign productions coming to Thailand, but they are using Thailand as a background. They are using Thailand as a as a studio, uh, as an exterior. As wish, wish I love it. You know, it's you, fantastic. You, you, you're giving job to uh, all the people here. This is amazing. And then you're giving big budget. You know, our budget for a Thai movie is not that much, but a foreigner budget coming here and do it, it's great. And it's giving job to a foreigner in, Th in Thailand, getting, getting a job also because you know the foreign i talk i have a lot of stunt guy and my actors my, my my foreigner friend here everywhere here they say I, they can't be on like you know that thai movie mm -hmm. because they're foreigner sure but they could, they could be on an international movie shot, shot here a lot you know like and in, there are opportunities almost yeah, every day every, every day yeah so yeah the more shoot in thailand the better i have this example in in mind which is maybe the opposite of Uh, being a foreigner and trying to do a, a, a Thai film. It's Luc Besson in France. Mm -hmm. He's making American films yes. in France. So he's making French films that feel and, uh, you know, look and feel American. Um, and he's being successful around the world and he has huge success, um, not only with what he directs, but what he, he produces. Can it, could it exist in Thailand? Could, could you be... Uh, Could that's, you be this guy? That's the goal. It's that's make, the goal. Is to make an American movie in Thailand. I, I always want to bring stuff to shoot in Thailand. When I talk to my investors in other places, they're like, hey, I want to do this movie, but in Thailand, we got to show in Thailand. So your story taking maybe taking place yeah. in Thailand, but shot in in with a, not the Thai story yeah. storytelling I just, style. I just wish you know, the movie Extraction take place in Thailand. You know, okay. <laughs> that, just imagine that. You know, Chris Hemsworth try and save a Thai boy from a prison and, you know it take, that would be that would help talent so much so have you seen the creator not yet the creator you know it's but uh, I, i know about all my stand guy talk about this stuff you know the shot here and everything could, could the so the for the, those who didn't watch the the creator yet yes. it's uh, the story of it's it's a sci-fi movie yes. it's in the future and it's an american story 100 american style but it's being shot maybe two-thirds of the film takes place in thailand without yes saying it's in Thailand but or sometimes they say they mention it's in Thailand but it's it could be anywhere else but it's in Thailand could we have a Thai film Thai film uh, called The Creator that would be exactly the same but you know crafted in Thailand it's a Thai movie yeah it's a Thai movie yeah if somebody can pull that off you know it's a sci-fi not many sci-fi successful in Thailand so far but if somebody can pull it off be amazing i would love to see that big budget <laughs> uh, why why we don't have this yet um i think thailand doesn't quite believe in the sci-fi genre yet you know we more of a buddhist religion you know spiritual okay. we believe in you know karma all this stuff but as a ai's technical thing they, they, they don't like hmm thailand, <laughs> thailand can't go space just yet <laughs> korean can korean make sure. those movies yes, right now yeah. yeah korea can go to space but they can lose an astronaut in this yeah. china <laughs> and korea can go to space but thailand not yet, not yet. Yeah, we, we stay in here first <laughs> quite grounded yeah yeah oh that's interesting you are listening to filming in thailand a podcast by Tero documentary with your host stefan lombert Let's talk about the f this filming world in Thailand. Um, are, are you involved in um, in production services? Do you have a yes? Do you, you do production yeah. services. Yes, now, now, now I start my own company that we have oh. production services. And you welcome foreign production. Welcome, yes, in Thailand. Um, 
how do you deal with your your know-how being a, a, a filmmaker being a creator and suddenly you are the produ the executive producer so basically you are acting on other people you know ideas and how, where do you set the boundaries like you, you're not a creator anymore how do you deal with that yeah I just want to help them first you know, I want to know what you're making you know okay I, I don't accept every production coming here the, the content you need to agree with maybe the editorial the the content yeah I would and advise them, you know, sometimes you can't quite shoot here. <laughs> it's, it's legal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to help them, guide them the way we can do it and we can't. Okay. Um, so now let's say you're, uh, you're on set because as an executive producer, the line producer, I guess. Yeah. Um, and when you see that the, maybe the director is doing maybe something that you would not do the same, do, do you do you voice it or do you just keep it for yourself and say, "Hey, I'm the producer here. I'm not. It's no, not my I, money." It's I voice it privately. Okay, you know, I, I can't voice on set. You know, I, I, I guy. It depends. If it's a big director, I can't you know quite do that. But if a director that I'm building right now, which my company I'm building different directors right now, I can guy there and help him. Hey, um, for the market, I think we should do this. You know. Okay, you yeah. share you share your idea. Yeah, as yeah. A kind of a, yeah. a coach or yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I'd like to, to talk to you about uh, the relationship you have with your actors. You, you mentioned that you had some, uh, you know, big names coming to, to work with you. Uh, mm -hmm. um, what is your, your, your most uh, cherished memory on set with one of these actor or actresses that you, you, you had under your, you know, direction? Oh, um, my first time working with a big, big A-list was Ananda. You know, um, first of all, yeah, and I, very, very young. yeah, well, he, I didn't know he was going to work with me, but I just gave it a shot and I gave him a, gave him a script and he was like, okay, he didn't want to say who are you and stuff. He just said, okay, let's meet. When I meet with him, he talked about the movie only, the script, everything, the detail. And now, now you either be a celebrity, want to be, and you know, I just be in the spotlight one, okay. be, you know, Dala and stuff, sure. or you want to be an actor. I never worked with an actual actor, actor, you know, but, oh man, this guy is that deep down have helping me with my script too, the dialogues, everything, because he want to make sure that we have the good product to sell. Now, some directors, you know, we have ego, we just want, oh, you got to keep it like this, you know, because I have this vision, but yeah, you know, but he doesn't say that we got to do it, he help you like, hey, let's try this, let's, this may help the storyline flow better. To be an actor on set is to be naked and turn around slowly facing the director. <laughs> oh, oh, do you agree with that? Yeah, I'm, I guess so, yes. <laughs> I never <laughs> had that moment, I guess. <laughs> Figuratively speaking, the, yeah. the relationship you are describing that you have with uh, Kunananda is, seems to have been very, very deep, very strong. Does it help uh, your work as a director, your, your it craftsmanship? Helped me, it helped me improve myself uh, as a director. It, it does. It's like, no, wow, this is what, this is why he costs so much. <laughs> so I say, <laughs> first of all, I'm like, why would all this A list cast cost this much? I don't understand. You know, that they want this, they want that. You know, and then when you go on set, when you call action, they give you what you want. Like, oh my God. Okay. Okay. That's it. Some director says that the success of a movie is 100% in their hands. But what you're describing with Ananda is that you have. You know, you, you have your your shots ready, and then he makes the magic happen. No, I mean, I want to work with an actor who's not just come clock nine to five and go. 12, 12 hours set. Come on set, say your line, go. But for, for for these kind of actors, they come and they help you build to see more than you vision. If, if an actor could help me expand my vision more, like, oh my God, yeah, let's say that, or let's do this. Now some actor would go, okay, you good? Okay, let's go move on to the next scene. Oh. Or you want to try one more take, different style, different take, different mood and tone that they offer, they offer, they offer. Yeah, that could be better because directors don't think about this other detail that you, you know, you think about just one line of storyline. Sure. But if someone could give you option and help you, that'd be great, you know? Have you ever been in a situation that the exactly opposite where an actor, yeah, a young upcoming actor or actress is giving you advice that I'm not welcome. Oh yeah, I have all. I have <laughs> everything that's going on with me. When I try a lot of in Thailand, and all the other cast I work with, I have actors walk out on sets. I have actors giving small, little young kicking me. I got 
Every, everything that you think that not gonna happen it happens. Everything. <laughs> How do you deal with those, those unfortunate moments? Just go with it. You know. Okay. Sure. You know. You can't argue with it. It happens. It happens. Yeah. Because that's that's your Thai side, not your American side. <laughs> <laughs> your American side. Wait. <laughs> get, get back here. <laughs> I pay you this much. I pay. <laughs> yeah. Which side is more successful? You think dealing with this situation? The American side. Really? Yes. Why? Well, because you're more strong. I mean, stronger or yeah. Um, yeah yes, that's the deal. You got you know, it's by the book. You know, mm. like uh, we sign a contract. <laughs> but, Ooh, you're scary. Actually. Like, like, but, 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 but for Thai, like okay, we can try to talk it out. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so you you mix both. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Interesting. I want to see that. <laughs> Let's imagine today that uh, you open this envelope that you received and there is a check for $100 million. What would you do with it? Make the movie the creator. <laughs> <laughs> so you make one movie, you spend all on one movie. <laughs> that's, that's how, if I'm a director, yes, I would spend all on one movie. If I'm a business <laughs> standpoint, no, give me like 10 movies. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you would make 10 movies? From a business, from a company? Yes. No, depend, no as, as, as a filmmaker. Yeah, depending on what the check goes to, my company or for, for me? <laughs> There is, it's blank. <laughs> it's a cash, it's a cashier shake. Oh my God. Okay. You run away. <laughs> no more film. Or we, we tired now. <laughs> Just make a movie for like one minute. Like I keep all the rest. <laughs> you would, you would go for the film. You would make the film of your dream with spending whatever money has to yes. be spent. Every, or Every director that I talk to, not every talk to, but every director out there in the world have that one project that they want to do. The big one, the Lord of the Ring, the Matrix, you know, the Star Wars. In their pocket, uh -huh. but they can't do it now. They gotta build themselves up. Sure, I have a lot. You have a lot. Well, now I just do this project because I have to for the business for the, my, myself to build myself, build my profile. Mm -hmm. But I do have that one big. You have profit. one big. That profit. one million dollar picture will come, and then uh, you know what is it? Yeah. No one's listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us? That's big, big movie like, like like something like a big sci-fi movie. Okay. Yeah. In Thailand. In Thailand, of course. Mm -hmm. Something that never been done before. You know? You're going to bring us around space. Like, all, no, all I can say is when the last week I want to see it, a flying tuk tuk. That's all I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to say. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Lili Tongkam presents the flying tuk tuk. <laughs> Okay, that, you know that's that's a nice speech actually. Right, yeah, it's a good, a good pitch. <laughs> give me one million. What, give me one hundred million dollars for a flying tuk tuk. Yes, uh, let, let me work on that. Maybe I can find a flying tuk tuk for less <laughs> money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> flying tuk tuk. That's an inter I think there was no movie with a flying tuk tuk. Exactly. Yeah. We have sci-fi, but you gotta make the tuk tuk fly. You know, <laughs> can land, be cool. So when asked. Uh, what you would do with $100 million, you would build a flying tuk-tuk. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Everybody was like, why do I think about that? Why don't we think about that? You know, like do a sci-fi flying tuk-tuk or Blade Runner style in, mm -hmm. in Siam. In Siam like, Can you imagine the fifth element and they are, oh, instead of being in a taxi, they are in a tuk-tuk. Yes, yes, <laughs> Bruce yes, Willis is going Yes, up. exactly. <laughs> Multipass. <laughs> <Yes, where laughs> <you go>. Help! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So, at uh, Filming in Thailand, we have a, a special tool. It's um, a time machine that will bring us back uh, when and where you want to talk to yourself at a younger age and place. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. This is the time traveling machine. Okay, where are we? We are five years ago. Five years ago. And uh, you're talking to yourself. What advice or what would you tell yourself to make you feel better? I'd say 10 years ago, actually. 10 years yeah, ago? Yes, yeah, 10 years. I would say... Uh, sorry, we have to start again. This year, the time traveling machine. Because now we are 10 years ago. Yes. 10 years ago. I would say, hey, move to Thailand faster. <laughs> oh, there, now. Don't waste your time in the States. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because right after college, you know, everybody want to go to California trying to make it. But you can't because it's expensive. Your money running out. You know, if I tell him, hey, go to Bangkok. Try it out because it's still new. The industry is new and fresh. And, you know, I would make it sooner maybe. You know? mm -hmm. Right? Well, so you would, you would travel in time, meet your own self and say, go back to Thailand and make it there now. Yes, yes. Our industry is here. It's Bangkok, you know. And then we can meet a lot of people in the industry faster and 
California is big, you know, Hollywood is big. It's you, by the time you meet there, it'd be like years go past. The whole idea of the podcast is everybody is filming in Thailand. Mm. The, the whole industry is here. But the whole industry is here using Thailand as, as, a, as a set. And maybe f directors like you and with the kind of work uh, you're doing are bringing Thailand up to uh, be able to produce films that are, um, you know, that, that a large audience can relate to. Um, is, there, is there something, some advice you would give to aspiring or young filmmakers uh, about uh, um, how, how to make it in Thailand? Yes. Or from Thailand. Yes. Um, I was hit my, myself too, I would say, you know, because when you're starting out as a filmmaker, you want to do your independent movie, mm -hmm. your small movie, your, your vision, your passion, your great shots. No, think outside the box. You know, right now it's 2023. The world is expanding. Everything is growing every day. AI, all that stuff. Learn everything from it. Learn new technology. Mm -hmm. Don't just think about just one thing, you know. Think about this big thing, you know. Just learn everything. You have the tools that I don't 10 years ago. I have no YouTube, Google, anything. Now that you do, learn it. What, what kind of knowledge do you think it's uh, important to have as a filmmaker? In the business side. The business side. That's really important. You mean contract or everything. what kind of business? business side, distribution. Like, distribution. How to sell the movie, where the, you gotta know as a filmmaker, like you just make a movie, right? Mm -hmm. But where your movie go? Who's going? Who's going to buy your movie? You don't know that because they don't teach you that in school. Every school that I talk to here, they don't teach you that. So when once you know, you get the money and you go to sell the movie, the money come back. How do you do that? How do you make the money go around? And you found this out. I mean, you know how it's coming. It's coming back now. You you understand this now that story, I understand. Yeah. Oh, that's how movies being made is. It's not just make a movie. It's more like get the money, make a movie, sell the movie, coming back to the investor. It's like, it's like this. It's like so. so yes. It's, once you know that, once you know the business side and that routine, you go. Oh, okay, now I can just make any movie that I want. And why do you think it's not explained anywhere? Because it's not explained anywhere. You have to be so successful to be within this uh, positive cycle. Well, when, when I do this, like it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, it's very. I mean, if it's easy, anybody can just make money like in and out. But it's just like you know, you gotta know the way that I can't tell you because everybody will be my. Learn my way. <laughs> we can do a, a paid, uh, you know, episode yeah, we you share, yes. <laughs> and you tell the secret. Yeah. I, I try to get this from Boy. He refused to tell yeah, me this secret. When you say selling, it's it's really selling or bringing it to a, an audience to make sure that people will watch the film. Uh, first thing is money. Is you have to sell the movie to make the money back. Second is platform or audience. Mm -hmm. um, who's gonna watch the movie? Who's gonna watch the movie more? Like, of course, everybody want to make a movie. Millions of people want to watch a movie. So way where can you get that from Netflix, Amazon, of course, now. And the movie theater is not that much now. So who's going to watch a movie? That's me thinking. You just can't make a movie. You make a movie, now what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Are you teaching this to uh, to students in Thailand? or I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to. My company want to support young filmmakers. That's what we do. We go talk to university Okay. Uh, the fourth year and explain to them because, you know, you know, there they don't teach you distribution. Sure. How? What do you do after? Because basically, no one knows how it works. Maybe, or maybe they want to tell a secret. I don't know. Uh -huh. Something about it is that I, we should tell the young kid who's coming up from school of distribution and where, where can you go to find jobs and stuff. You know. What is this element about distribution that people are missing out? Uh, money. <laughs> yeah. I, I say how it is it's money everything yeah, everything revolves around money in the industry like you want to make a movie but you gotta have money to do it yeah. you gotta find that one person otherwise said you, your advice could be tell me if I'm wrong if there is no money don't make your film don't work for free yes don't work for, don't put your own money into a movie that's, that's, what, that's what I say why is that huh? but we could say the opposite put your own money because you believe in it Put your own money. Yeah, but it's still a gamble. You, it's a gamble. You, you might not get your money back, and you just on a debt. It's true that some people life, you know. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Some some people's job is to gamble. I mean, professionally is to gamble with with investment. Uh, well, the reason why really is you don't know, if you don't know the business. Yes, if you don't know the business, don't put your own money it's in, into your creative passion project mm -hmm. because you need a partner who know the business who help you get the money back. <laughs> 
Is there any other partner than, uh, than, than uh, Kunboy in Thailand who knows the business? I mean, he he he, he knows me, the business. He knows the business. I mean, he helped me get here. I'm here because of him. Because you know, of his different ways. You some other producers and the company want to just stay in this local Thai. But he, sure. but Kunboy, wants to expand. He has the mindset of international as, as I do, you know. So we need more like him, like you know, who can want to help grow Thailand to bring the Chinese or India come to shoot more here, you know. This is one of the secrets of, of, of your trade is you need a couple, the creator and, and the business person. You just need a, uh, someone you can trust. And so who believe in your vision, who believe the same mindset, you know. If someone doesn't believe in your vision, that they're not going to support you, put that 10 minute time to talk to you. So find that person. Everybody got to find that one person or two person, a group or something who can grow together. Before we, we end this, uh, this episode, um, uh, I would like to, to have a word about uh, the AI revolution. Mm -hmm. I don't feel it's a revolution. There is always, you know, new, uh, new technology coming up and you just have to learn the new technology and mm -hmm. move forward. But uh, do you see your, your, your job as a director disappearing? Do you think your job will still exist in, I say, 10 years once AI is so powerful that they can create interesting stories? No, not really. I'm a, it's a provocative question. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, but it's good to have. Um, it's, it's good people expanding new ways of telling the story, you know, new technology, new ways of making money. <laughs> Are you using um, any AI-based tools yourself? I have no time to learn it. Not, not you you got to learn it first, you know. So now I'm busy with the business. I'm like, yeah, I know about it's coming. It's like, okay, I got one day I got to sit down and know about this AI technology can create their own movie thing, you know, like, oh, interesting. Is there some, some, some part of the business do you, you think will be replaced 100% by, by computers, by, by, you know, in artificial intelligence? Or? No, um, I, I want to see it first. Before I start to be involved in that mm -hmm. world, the AI world or the other thing, I want to see somebody actually making it first. I don't want to be the first guy who wants to start it. <laughs> I want to see someone who actually made a good movie with AI. Okay, once that happened, oh, interesting. Now it's just talk. It's just you know, gossip and stuff. Okay, so AI is... Uh, so to conclude on AI, um, interesting, but you wait and see. Yeah, I just want to wait and see who can do it first. If somebody did great, like, well, it's a good movie. Oh, what? All shot in AI? Uh, in, uh, all CG? Okay, let's get involved in that business. Now it's just like, hey, yeah, Let's go and do it. <laughs> Before we conclude our episode of filming in Thailand, I'd like to offer you the award of best guest ever for this episode. Oh, sweet. Fiat, please, can you proceed with the award ceremony? <laughs> So this is a, a original T-shirt of our oh, nice. partner, uh, uh, Bangkok Doc, uh, BKK Doc, Bangkok yes, International yes. Documentary Film Award and Festival. Yes. Uh, I think you're a jury in this uh, yes. festival that I organize. Yes. And that concludes this episode of Filming in Thailand. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, that's, that's been a thrill. That's been our, our pleasure. You, yes. you shared so many insights. Uh, that, that was really interesting. Thank you very we much. more like this. We want to keep people keep you know, telling the story. I still so. want to have your secret on how to make money from, from this industry. Yeah, but we got to make money from them first. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. you are. 50, 50, 50, 50 pun. <laughs> okay, people, fantastic. That's a wrap. It's been a thrill. And thank you for being uh, such a great guest today. Thank you. Uh, hope to see you on screen soon again. Okay, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you and see you soon. So soon. That was Filming in Thailand, an original podcast brought to you by Tarot Documentary on Rudy Podcast with your host, Stefan Lombe. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode of Filming in Thailand. It didn't record. We have to start again. Yeah. Okay, we, we start from the start. First, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you. You're a good sport. You would yeah. have been ready to start again. <laughs>